All right, so you're playing Sidereal Confluence and you need to learn the Unity Species. Well, you came to the right place, but you need to know this is a game of compounded interest. Don't invest so hard in technology and upgrades that you leave yourself without resources because resources are what you need for future terms. Now, let's read the background of this faction. If only the galaxy mattered. The Unity are less a civilization and more an expanding simulated ecology or an unbounded universe of mathematics. Every possible computation is explored. Everything that could be sapient in some unconceivable reality lives somewhere within Unity's computronium depths. The vast majority of them haven't even heard of the galaxy or its aliens, and most of those who have can't conceive of it being important. Most don't even realize that they can't take their physical plant and move it out of reality into a simulated universe. The Confluence is a minority of Unity, mostly those who are concerned with the material workings of their machines, see both the potential and importance of galactic society. These struggle to convince others of their kind to get involved, while simultaneously struggling to make themselves relevant in the growing society of aliens. When asked for their name, the Unity had none, as they didn't consider themselves to be one people. They found an ancient name in their oldest database, Unity. Why they have once called themselves that, they do not know. So most of Unity's converters have wild inputs, which can be satisfied with any cube of the size. Unity also has output of wilds, which can be used in their converters inputs, but this is actually wasteful and should be avoided. So the wild outputs are small or large gray cubes and can be used as if they were any color of that size. Large ones as black, blue, or yellow, and small ones as green, white, and brown. And these wild cubes are immune to Zeth's stealing. So don't avoid running your economy to make yourself more protected. And buying protection from the Zeth is usually much cheaper anyways. With your converters, Inietz interest converters can't produce more wild resources, but they don't destroy them if they are used as input. They simply pass through the converters and stay as wild. Use them as a third party in a three-way trade. Your wilds will make their interest converters much easier to run. Unity also has flexible colonization because their cards can be flipped or played by consuming a colony of any climate and spending some resources. Unity can only support one colony. You can colonize a second, but you will need to trade or consume it. If not, you'll end up having to discard it to the bottom of the deck as you enter the economy phase. Unity has four computer world cards that start out of play, and you can choose any of the four to put into play by running the converter at the top of the cards. This represents setting up vast servers on other worlds and convincing new sections of the Unity population to get involved in the growing society. If you find you are accumulating too many large or small cubes to use effectively, play computer worlds. These aren't exactly valuable, but they let you adjust your economy to correct these imbalances. If you play a computer world, you should always upgrade it as soon as possible. So for everyone else, the economy phase is all about becoming rich and the trade phase is all about fixing the colors of resources. But for you, this is different. Your economy phase fixes the colors of resources, so you must use the trade phase to become rich. Always trade your resource wilds. Always trade up in value. Usually two types of trades work. The less effective way is the big late trade phase trades where players are getting desperate for specific resources. To these players, you can upsell quite a lot, but it's rare to happen. And this is not guaranteed to happen on any given turn. The better trade is the fast deals where someone wants something, you give it to them, and they pay you slightly more. Trade a large for two small, or a small for a large, or two small cubes for a large and a small. You have three advantages for these trades. One, you have wild cubes, so you always have what the other player needs. Two, you have wild input, so you don't care what colors they give you as long as they pay you a little more than you pay them. And three, as long as you don't care about inputs or output colors, ignore that and focus only what the other players need. 
everyone else has to think about their own economy and you don't. So really you can operate inside other players' decision loops offering trades that get them what they most desperately need for only a small markup before the player can pursue the table and find an alternative. You need to close the deal and jump to the next player all in the time that the other players are figuring out what they want. If players are hesitant to pay you in immediate markup, ask to be paid next turn with 50% profits. Oh yeah, and there is a third type of trade at the end of the turn if you have leftover wilds and someone else has leftover cubes of colors they don't have a near-term use for. Offer a wild for their cubes for a small price and they pay you a small cube for a service and you take their other cubes and return a matching set of wild cubes. Boom. Your economy can run on anything, so make sure the other players know that you want their junk. Don't worry about getting the correct mix of large or small cubes. You can play computer worlds to adapt to the resources that you have. Aim to get about two computer worlds out in the first three rounds, and don't worry about getting them all out. Now, since you can ignore your own economy during the trade phase, you'll have attention to spare. Look out for players who need a few cubes to run a converter or invent something. Then offer those cubes before they even ask. If anyone has leftover resources or unused converters at the end of the trade phase, see if you can fix that. The other players often won't be able to pay you immediately, so accept payment next turn for that 50% markup. Upgrade your Era 1 technologies to make more wilds and to consume anything. If nanotechnology and genetic engineering are invented, there will be a huge increase in demand for brown and green. You can run the upgraded version of one of them on white, avoiding the demand and selling what the market is now desperate for. Your Era 2 technologies upgrade to produce more wilds, but lack the wild inputs on the back. And that's Unity. If you have any more ideas or recommendations on how to play with this species, please comment below. We would love to read what you have to say about it. Again, this is Board Game Brody, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around and check out some other board game reviews to see what you might want to get to the table.